Hello and welcome to the Southbound Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Matty B. And boy, do we have a crazy week. I, I've been starting off with college, but I'm going to start off with NFL this week because your boy, Jameis, man. Packers are down 17 points. It's 0 to 17 in like the second half. And I had I had missed the first part because they had a food festival that I went to. Um, had to get some real Polish food. So I'm like, I'll go there, you know. And I'm, I'm going to miss the beginning of the game. I get home. They're down 17 points. Derek Carr had just been injured. I thought this game's going to be go bad. No. Jameis comes in. Doesn't move the ball. And I watched the Packers come in. And honestly, if they would have kicked the field goal, which is my theme, take the points. Always take the points. I don't understand it why the Packers are chasing points down 0-17. You saw Jameis wasn't moving the ball. Kick the field goal first. You need three scores. Um, They go for it. They don't get it. The next trip down, they do kick the field goal. Then they come back, get a touchdown, and they go for two. And the announcer, I don't know who it was, but they were like, why would you go for two here? They were like very shocked by it. And he kept saying, it's the analytics. I'm telling you, it must be the new analytics. I'm like, yeah, they just realized, buddy, that if you go for two here, you can win. If you don't get it, you have one more chance to go for two and tie it anyway. Like your team played like crap the first half of the game. They have some new life. Let's rip it. And I honestly was glad that they went for two because I was thinking, if I was a coach, I'd probably just go for two here and try to get this game over with. Because you don't want to go to overtime. You don't want Jameis to start getting into a rhythm, right? Like eventually, because he's coming in cold, hasn't had any of the reps. Once he starts moving the ball, it's going to be over. Because um, they can just eat the clock. They get the two point, get the ball back, score the, the go ahead. It's 18 to 17. Jameis starts moving the ball like I figured was going to happen. And their kicker shanks the field goal. And it was such a perfect end to my weekend. I thought I had cursed it. <laughs> I thought, man, I, everything's going wrong. I I even uh, hedged my bets. Last night I played the wrong kicker because um, I had a lead. My opponent in fantasy had Jalen Hurts, and I had a kicker left. So I picked up the Rams kicker thinking, who knows if Joe Burrow is going to play. The Bengals have looked like crap. And I played the Rams kicker to be safe, which, to be fair, he did get double-digit points and helped me win. But then the Bengals kicker went off and had, like, 18 points or something crazy, and I thought, figures. Right when I bench him, he goes off. But at least the Packers won. Now they're 2-1, ready to go. It's going to be a good year. I, I, I've been telling people, Jordan Love isn't bad. I, I don't know if it's, like... Is Aaron Rodgers that much into the media's heads that they're like just not even giving Jordan Love a chance? I don't remember Aaron Rodgers getting that much hate, right? When Brett Favre left, I remember people saying like, well, it's a risky move, you know, but Aaron Rodgers has really been groomed under Brett Favre for such a while. And with Jordan Love, it's kind of like, well, he probably sucks, right? Because they couldn't get rid of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Yet at the same time, did you see Joe Namath's comments? He's like calling yeah. out Zach Wilson and stuff. It's like, come on, yep, buddy. He was. Like, all right, John Namath, yeah, real relevant, buddy. Like, weren't you the guy that was drunk during your TV interviews kissing the reporter, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm so surprised that they're even putting that on ESPN. That's the ticker I see this afternoon. John Namath getting airplay. Crazy times. He wants to, like, clean house. The Jets aren't even bad. I've said it before. I'm surprised they don't try to make a move. The Jets are one quarterback away. And if Zach Wilson, he doesn't even seem that bad. But it's like teams want quarterbacks to come in and play lights out. And it just doesn't happen. I mean, even Baker this year with Tampa Bay, everyone thought that was going to be a gigantic drop drop off. Uh, Now that Baker has a supporting cast, he's actually not too bad. Imagine that. Yeah, it's like, oh, I, I've already I've already told people, like, 
hey, Baker's probably not going to be that bad. I'm surprised that the Browns are like getting rid of him because he had just got them to the playoffs for the first time in however many years, right? And they actually seemed like they were good because he got them all the way to the AFC Championship. And some teams are just so ready to just cut and get rid of guys that it, it's mind-boggling to me. And I know the, the Bucs ended up losing to the, the Eagles last night. But the Eagles were the Super Bowl team. Tampa Bay is 2-1. and one. Tampa Bay has been like, what? Even when Tom Brady was there, they were only winning like eight or nine games in the regular season, right? Getting in the playoffs. And then Tom Brady would start winning from there. But not not a bad move. Because if you're looking at the standings right now, like a lot of the, the league is wide open. Uh, you have from the NFC side, I've been saying it the entire time, you have the Eagles and the Niners have been looking good. I wasn't sure if Purdy was, was going to have... A drop off, but there's no chance like that any of these other teams are really head and shoulders above the others. Like it's realistic that the Packers could make a move, Tampa Bay could make a move with Baker, like um, even the Lions could maybe make a move this postseason. The one team that really shocked me was the ass whooping the Cowboys took because I thought the Cowboys would look like they were on the 49ers level. And maybe the Eagles level, and I was like, man, this Cowboys team looks good. And then they didn't show up at all. And wow. I have I have no idea what to make of them. I thought, this is the same old Cowboys. They're going to start choking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even know, because like, if you're a Cowboys fan, I don't know how you could watch that game. And, and it's against the Cardinals. So it's not like they were playing the Chiefs, you know? Or the Eagles, even. It was like the Cardinals. The Cardinals aren't even good. I had to do like a triple check to see what the Cardinals' record even was. They were 0 2 going in. Yep. And they had Dobbs looking like Patrick Mahomes back there. <laughs> and everyone had talked about, well, the Cowboys' offense doesn't even need to do anything because the defense is so good. Dobbs was hitting players. I thought, man, if the Steelers had this guy, they never would have went for Pickett. Even though he went to pit, like this guy look is looking like the guy that everyone talked about Dobbs being. And maybe it'll work out for him now. I don't know. But I mean they're the Colonels are still bad. Maybe it was just a one game blip and he can be like, Yeah, I remember when I tore up the Cowboys that one time? Like around his family, they're like, Yeah, we remember that, buddy. And his kids will be like, Good one, <laughs> good one, Dad. I guess I'm gonna watch my highlight film. It's just one game. Cowboys. <laughs> like <laughs> awesome at least you got him but I think the NFC is wide open um, the AFC of course the Dolphins absolutely destroyed the Broncos I've never seen a whooping like that they scored 70 points that's like when you're you're playing someone at home on Madden and you're like I just want to make you cry like, I mean even college we don't see that many Beat downs. I, Michigan beat Rutgers a few years ago, seventy-eight to nothing, and it was almost like everything went right in that game. And that was a game where there was a big talent discrepancy. And I mean, that was like a power five to power five. They're in the same conference. Like, you know, there's no way you should be beating them, be scoring seventy points on someone in your conference. They beat them by fifty. The the Dolphins did. It wasn't as bad as a seventy-eight to nothing beat down. But that's what the Dolphins are doing. They just weren't tackling them. Their guys are just running wild. And I thought, how can that be anything but deflating for the Broncos? Their season has to be over. They're 0-3. I know it's early. But personally, that's the only team I have checked off that's completely eliminated early. They're my first team gone. It's the Broncos. You don't survive that. You might. like it, It's almost like a movie, Matt. Like, well, it was like the, what's the one with Charlie Sheen where they're like down Major League. Like down so many points in the record, and they just need to start winning games to move up to get the pennant or whatever. Yeah, that's like what the Broncos are right now. We just took a major beating. The guys go in the locker room, um, or was it Bulldog? What's the one where they have the speech about lollygagging? That's what it kind of reminded me of. You guys are just lollygagging out there, not tackling anybody, and then <laughs> <laughs> like now's a chance. You're zero three. You have to do something now, or you might as well just quit on the year. And I have a hard time believing, like it's not a movie. They're not going to turn it around. They're going to keep lollygagging. That's it. These guys are professionals. Because the guys that were trying hard, they're not going to try hard anymore. Because they were like, well, i got to preserve myself and just not get hurt. 
right? Yeah. Russell Wilson, like, where have you? What are you doing? Like, I don't even know what to say to that game. It was that bad. So, that's my take. Steelers look pretty good, though. I don't know what you thought of that game. I thought I thought they they played a lot better. I mean, I still think there's glaring holes with with play calling, but I don't think it's something that Pittsburgh's going to address right now. Like if they're gonna if they're gonna fire Canada, they they won't do it three we, three games into the season. Even Canada, they were talking about, and I know it's the uh, guys just blowing smoke but they were talking about how what great adjustments he had right like look at all this stuff matt canada's doing right now it's awesome and then like uh, they're talking about old school steeler football did they realize that these guys that are playing now that was like 50 years ago the the 70s steelers <laughs> 40 50 years ago like they're not running the same schemes you idiots I don't know why they always do that. They're talking about, like, this is an old-school football, Raiders, Steelers, let's go. I don't know what to think of the Raiders. Well, no, they're right. It's an old-school Pittsburgh team, which is why they haven't really done anything (laughs) outside of play 500 ball because it's the same old same, and that's why you have right now with with what's going on in Miami, they're using so, like, different motions and shifts and – trying to get their athletes in space in different ways that they're just out scheming everyone right now and it's not even close you might say speed and space dare i say it josh gaddis offense (laughs) miami's not looking like they have buyer's remorse getting rid of him right that's a college team miami but the dolphins i mean you have guys they talk about having dudes that are like track stars running all over the field and I feel like we've seen this before. I'm surprised Tua's looked so good coming back from all those concussions. And he's like, did you see he was getting um, some jujitsu thing work during the week where they're like hitting his head and like pushing him down and making sure that he falls and doesn't hit his head correctly? He's doing it three times a week or something they said. And I'm like, again, you're getting like hit in the head so you learn how to take hits three times a week, and then you actually are taking hits on Sunday. It seems like (laughs) a little bit late for that, but maybe it'll work. And I honestly wonder why the NFL doesn't really teach, or not even the NFL, but like even, I guess, college programs and stuff, where you have guys that are getting hurt. And I think I put it as a topic again. Like, you have injuries, it seems like they're happening all the time. You're blaming turf, you're blaming this, you're blaming that. Um, remember last week I speculated that like Nick Chubb, like it seems like his knee is a little bit more flexible than other athletes, right? They said that because his knee was more flexible, he might not even have torn his ACL or anything. He might only have a minor MCL sprain, which did you see his knee get bent? That's yeah. disgusting. But I, I said that on the show, like it happened in college. It happened in, in the NFL. Like, some guys' knees, they they take that same hit, and it, their knee doesn't bend like that. Well, they showed a – I saw one of the throws by Jordan Love where he's, like, falling down and his legs just go out on him. Oh, yeah. They're like to, – to most people, this is, like, a major blown knee. But because he's a professional athlete and training and all this other stuff, it's no factor. But some of them, too, I, like, you have to be that flexible, like – I have flexible ligaments, and I, that's why I'm surprised. Like, I'm wondering now, like, looking back, that's probably why I didn't blow up my knee and they just had to scope it. Um, but I had to re strengthen it, which was the most annoying part because, like, it would keep, like, it kept, like, it was really wobbly under me for at least, like, two months. And I ended up wearing just a brace, like, playing football for a good bit of that year just because it wasn't like I wasn't afraid to really re injure it, but because, like, I had. I had stretched it like I had hyper extended my knee playing baseball, trying to beat out a throw, and there was like mud, right? So my cleats after right after the base, my cleat got stuck, and I just felt like my knee go over, right? Made a sickening pop sound, and I thought, well, I had to tear something because like why else would it make that sound, right? 
and I couldn't move like side to side. I was really wobbly and we didn't have, we were playing summer, but we only had nine guys. So I was like, coach, I can't play center field or outfield, whatever I was doing. Um, I, I don't even know if I was playing second base. I was playing all over that year, but I said, you got to put me on third. I said, cause I can't move. I was like, put me on third. I'll play in the grass. <laughs> I was like, I can get down. I can go up and down, but I like, I lost all stability and it was like a weird feeling. And then like watching him take that hit. And it's almost like the same thing where, yeah, you might be lucky, but maybe that's just how you're made. And then you have to like develop and train those other things. And it will kind of work out. Cause even Jimmy G he took that awful like ankle hit, right? Against the Steelers. And I thought, Oh my God, is that Tom Brady's music? Is he coming back as the Raiders QB week three because of Steelers? Could you imagine the pain in Pittsburgh that would be caused if they were the team that knocked Jimmy G out for the year that brought Tom Brady back? People would legit cry. That would almost be like the karma of when uh, Carson Palmer got hurt in the playoffs. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I watched it and I thought, oh my gosh, Jimmy G is completely hurt. But then his like ankles had bent. And some guys, like we've been saying, some guys can't take that hit. Some guys are always injured. And it's always like, well, they're a different style. Like you can't just be, I mean, I guess maybe if you did train in like yoga or something, you get that flexible. But I do think it's more of like something genetically. Because some guys just, it, it's more than bad luck, right? Um, yeah. One of the college guys they were talking about, I forget what quarterback it was, he had transferred a few times. And they were talking about like, this guy just has bad luck. He's always getting hurt. And I'm like, is it bad luck though? Or is it just like he just is prone to more injuries? It's something that stinks, right? Some guys have heart issues where they can't even play sports. So it's like, all right, well, you're close, man. Maybe football's not for you. Do like, if you're a quarterback, do like one of the, the tossing things like discus or something in the track and field games. But even then, who knows? You could still get hurt. Um, let's see. Any other NFL ones that you wanted to talk about? I want to make sure you get everything. Um, you know, one thing I was surprised with is he he played well week one and then just kind of fell off the map as Calvin Ridley with Jacksonville. Like, Jacksonville had that really good start, and then they've just kind of nosedived the last two weeks. That's a team where it could be kind I would think it's who you played, but I don't think the Texans are really that good. So, like, to get killed by a team like the Texans is a little bit shocking, right? Yeah. Because I would think with Stroud being their quarterback that he he should have those rookie rookie bumps and learning curves that you should have an opportunity to take advantage of. Oh, you could just and say it. He played at Ohio State, so he's going to be a bust. <laughs> you would think it'd <laughs> well, be they, an auto win, right? Like the Packers beating the Bears week one. Everyone's shocked by that. I'm like, did you see who he's playing against? because <laughs> that was their first win that was Stroud's first win right yeah. yeah and he didn't play bad he threw for 280 yards two touchdowns so having a guy that um, every time I see a guy from Ohio State it's always like hey this guy could be the guy that breaks their mold and then it's like meh you watch the first two games you're like yeah probably not but then with Lawrence, man, I'm waiting for him to take that next step. And the division right now, I think Jacksonville has to win it outright this year. Right? How many years has Lawrence been in the league? Since 2021? That so this sounds is right. Third year? And the, the yeah. league is wide open. Like, they're letting, right now, Anthony Richardson, the rookie from Indianapolis, is is leading the division at two and one. Everyone else is one and two. I know it's early, but you're at home playing a rookie quarterback like Matt said. You can't lose to the Houston Texans. You just can't. 
I'm, I'm so shocked by it that you try to have a team in each division that seems like that's going to be the team that you can kind of bet on, right? Like I know the Chiefs, now it seems like I'm a little surprised by it, but it seems like the Dolphins might be that team. And the AFC North, I don't know, just because they all kind of seem bad. I don't know how Baltimore lost either this week. Because it's like an embarrassing loss whenever you lose to the Colts. That's another rookie quarterback thing. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you losing all these three-point games? Like, why are you not losing them all? But why are you playing these three-point games against the Bengals and the Colts? Like, come on, guys. You blew the Texans out. You should have blew the Colts out. I don't even think... I thought the Colts were in pure rebuild mode. But, you know, you were you brought up Dallas earlier, and I was thinking about this, too. There, there's all these comments like Dallas should really trade for Zeke and bring Zeke back. That's that's what they're missing. It's like their center was out. I think two of their guards were out. It's like may, maybe it has something to do with like not having any of their offensive line being a factor for why they're they had issues. And that was part of it. But I've said this. I made the joke like last week too about a team where if all your routes. Are long developing routes? You don't. You're not giving your line any help. Like throwing a 15 yard pass to CD Lamb isn't working eight times. Why do you? What are you doing that for? <laughs> like I, I don't get it. Like why aren't you mixing it up? It's almost like the Raiders when they weren't moving the ball, and he was kept feeding Devonta Smith, or not the you know, who wait. I'm, I'm losing my mind. But um, who's the other guy they have? A.J. Brown. Yeah, I'm thinking that not Devontae Adams, the other guy. I'm getting myself confused. Um, who's the other receiver? Did you say it? Brown. A.J. Brown. No, not the Raiders. Uh, Mosley is Mosley, I think. Check me on this. But they made a comment about how he kept throwing it to Devontae Adams, right? And they were like, we asked Jimmy why he keeps forcing all these throws to Adams. And they're like, we don't know why he's doing it. And he said, you'll be amazed by some of the catches this guy make makes. And I'm thinking, that's such a stupid comment, Jimmy G. Like, throw to the guy that's open. Like, why are you tearing this guy up? And then he starts hitting. I think it was Mosley. Um, I'll look and see what, what the stats were. But it was just like, open, wide open, wide open. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, I know Adams ended up with a ton of yards receiving, but um, I, I just didn't understand why the Steelers weren't making any adjustments in, into that. No, it was Jacoby Myers. That's who it was. Um, he had, he was getting 12 yards a ca- catch. He was just op- sitting in the middle of the field, just open, open, um, <laughs> late in the game. And I was like, Steelers, what the heck are you doing? Um, I thought he had the touchdown, but I guess he was out because they gave him both to Devontae Adams. Uh, but that's who I was thinking where if, if your guy's covered, but with the Cowboys, the reason I brought it up is because the Cowboys, they kept throwing to CeeDee Lamb. He wasn't moving the ball around. And I'm like, Dak, what are you doing? At least the Raiders started to open things up in the middle by throwing um, Myers across it, running like posts and stuff. It was open. But the Cowboys never made the adjustment. They just kept throwing fades to C.D. Lamb, and they were covered. And I was just thinking, like, if you're a Cowboys fan, you have to just be so mad at this game. Like, I just don't get it. (laughs) And having the offensive line out, awesome. But why is the defense getting torn up by Dobbs, dude? People in Pittsburgh have probably been like, that's the Dobbs we could have had maybe? (laughs) <laughs> like, like, nah, that's just Cowboys D not showing up. Not showing up at all. So, I'm trying to look at players. Like, I don't even know who you'd pick up because my boy Brees Hall has been doing absolutely nothing. Um, So, I like if, you, if you're looking for fantasy players, I have a lot of guys that are on the old injured reserve right now. Unless Eckler comes back. But I did, I did bid heavy for Jerome Ford. And dude, did that pay off. Because, like, I've got my, got my first win after all my injuries. 
but he had two touchdowns, and it seems like he's going to be featured in that offense a bit. Maybe if Kareem Hunt comes back, that it'll kind of be open. But if you keep scoring touchdowns, they're going to start feeding you the ball more. So we'll see what happens. But I think that's all I had. Um, anything else you want to talk about for the NFL? Nah, let's move it along. All right, so um, college football. We had some big weeks. Florida State, we'll let you kick it off. Florida State finally beat Clemson for the first time in how many years? Like seven or eight, right? Yes, it's 2016. And if we're being honest, dude, they should have lost. I Wow, that's ignorant. Well, how's that ignorant, dude? They couldn't even score on offense until the second half. Look. We have two gigantic receivers, and we throw 50-50 jump balls to them all the time. How can it possibly go wrong? I know. I was going to tell you that you're running the Michigan State offense. You don't have to do that. You don't have to take the Michigan State wide receiver and just run their offense, Matt. Well, we took Keon Cole, and we're like, we'll teach you this new offense. He's like, no, just throw it up to him. We're like, oh, okay. That's a great idea. That's called the Mel Tucker. You just keep taking your shot and see what happens. And then... (laughs) it's, It's so frustrating to watch. Well, they only had, what, 22 yards rushing or something? By the way, yeah. I get all my hot takes from TigerNet. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I came prepared to, to just have a rebuttal for you anytime. Clubs is still top dog, dude. I don't know what you're talking about. Florida State couldn't even score. That was that game was basically dab Can't wait for him to go to Alabama. Get him out of there because he, he ruined the program. He had it on top. <laughs> He had it on top. Like a, like a fan base that is not <laughs> spiraling. I don't know why he thought that it was good to just hire friends, Matt, of the program and people that had no experience at all. Like, you just hired your buddies, you brought them in, and it was time for they moved on. It was very clear that Brad Venables, he was the mastermind, and now that he's at Oklahoma and they're scoring 70 points a game, it's very clear. Dabo's yeah, the one letting their guys... 70 points a game as the <laughs> defensive-minded coach. That, that had everything to do with it. That's exactly why Dabo called that stupid fumble play that Florida State picked up and ran for a touchdown. If they wouldn't have called that, Florida State would have lost that game. Never even went to overtime. And those are the facts, Matt. Those are the facts. Write them down. <clears throat> when, when you look at Florida State's offense, like one of their, their bigger run concepts is their counter game. And like they've run it so much that it's like, oh, there's counter again. There's counter again. And the last two weeks, they've not run it. And the offense has sputtered. It's like, why are you getting away from the stuff that, that makes your offense go so much better? You know, and they have, they do have the two big receivers on the outside, but there's also some pretty good inside receivers as well that you could throw the ball to them in the middle, just like Clemson did for the entire <laughs> first half. And it was like, when you look at, at the plays, like Clemson didn't have, they didn't have these big explosive plays 15, 20 yards down. So I think they only had like three or four explosive plays. A lot of them were like third and nine, and they get 12 on a slant. Consistency. Uh-huh. That's because we don't, they don't need the explosive players anymore. Dabo has a system, and it's fitting in. That's part of the rebuild process, Matt. No, uh, that part of it. Yeah, they'll get there also, eventually. And also not bringing in any transfer players or paying any players because that goes against his belief. Well, it's bad news for Florida State because I, we've crunched, we've done the numbers. We've crunched the math, Matt. There's no more divisions. So all Clemson needs is Florida State or Duke to lose three games. Clemson has everyone else lose two and they win all their other games and they're in. And they'll, them right where they want them. they'll get that rematch, man. It's only a matter of time. Uh, they crunched the numbers over a tiger net. That's all that needs to happen. And it's Duke. Like they're not going to lose three games, Matt. Like, are you kidding me? Like since when have they been good? They've only beat Northwestern and Yukon and Northwestern's coach got fired. 
uh, for being a weird perv. So their team is definitely lost, right? <laughs> the only thing that really stinks is that Notre Dame doesn't count as a conference loss. They really could have did Clemson a favor if that was a, a game where like they could have helped Duke get another loss. But Duke plays like NC State and UNC, maybe. Coupled with that Florida State game, Duke can get three losses and Clemson can just slide back in. Get the rematch against Florida State. Um, they'll win this time because they're not going to call the fumble play. The guy's not going to let the guy run right through the line on a missed assignment and fumble, sack the quarterback, fumble it, pick his own fumble up, and then run for 50 yards. That's not going to happen twice, Matt. <laughs> and that's, that's the game. So Clemson Tigers will be ACC champions. Then they've, done, they've also done the math. Like SEC only has three undefeated teams left. And they're all in the East playing Georgia. So if Georgia just takes care of business, the SEC will not be able to have two teams in the playoffs and a two-loss Clemson, Matt, that's ACC champs right there. Those are early season losses. They're still getting in the playoffs. <laughs> don't worry. I don't, even, I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> That's so stupid. Why is that stupid? Come on. The Clemson's the premier ACC program. If they haven't been carrying the water, Matt, who knows how low these teams would be ranked right now. Wow. Wow. That's that's a mighty that's a mighty statement. I've been Matt. I've been reading the comments. I brought him into the show. I did a bunch of research for this week. I thought I will you, say this is this is the thing that that annoys me more watching Florida State than anything. I don't notice it as much with other programs, but like with Florida State, they'll be like Keon Coleman from Michigan State. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, I was going to bring that Johnny up. Johnny Wilson from Arizona. They, they got these guys transferred in. He, he wasn't developed on their own. They had to transfer. They weren't good enough at their regular school. They had to transfer to Florida State, and now they're playing. Like, it's not like this, this random receiver from Michigan transferred in from BYU. They and never they, they never talk about it. I noticed that, too, because um, I, I was laughing because they kept bringing up Michigan State. It would be like, uh, it wouldn't say like Florida State touchdown. They would be like, and there it is, touchdown, Coleman from Michigan State. And I'm like, why? Did, is Tom Izzo paying you guys to make these plugs? Because like, yeah, I, I was I was so baffled by it. Because um, it happened back in the day. Um, Michigan had that transfer Charles from uh, from Kentucky. And so every time Michigan basketball would play, they'd make a comment to be like, oh man, he he went to Kentucky. He's he's good, because otherwise he he would never have <laughs> he'd never be playing like right now. Michigan would not be as good unless Charles came over from Kentucky. Man, uh, that's just, just how it works. And so now it's and almost it like the same thing for Florida State. It's like Florida State's been bad, but thank God Mel Tucker coached this guy up from Michigan State. Michigan State, the Antonio, he's back in the program. They're gonna bring back the player walk or whatever they're gonna do. Um, they're going to get back to that old school toughness right now. But in the meantime, they're loaning full players out to Florida State. I actually saw um, someone uh, on TigerNet said that what they should do is the boosters should just start taking chalk of other conferences, like ga- teams like Michigan State that seem to be imploding. And if they have any big time receivers, they should just get in on Murley. Because like, it's clear that that's a need for, for Clemson. If they would have got those guys in, Oh man, could you imagine how bad that beatdown would have been against Florida State? Probably fifty point win. <laughs> fifty five. Fifty five if I'm being honest, Matt. And even with Jared Verse, they're like, Jared Verse, potential potential first round draft pick. He transferred to Florida State two years ago. It's like he, he was he wasn't even he wasn't even highly recruited. He was at some small school in Albany. It's like, yeah, it was a couple years ago, pal. Get over yourself. <laughs> Like why? Why are we still talking about this right now? Like, and, and they don't do it for anyone else. Like, Colorado, their entire roster has been from the portal, and they're not like this guy transfer from here. This guy transfer from there. Like that is truly a roster that you could be like a who's who <laughs> of random random schools that you brought people from that might be it might be interesting and relevant that just came in this spring to the program. There's like. It's just, it's all prime. It's all prime. They just shifted to the D on. I don't know why you sound so bitter, man. Florida State, 
Um, they had to get a guy from a big time conference to Big Ten, and he helped turn the program around. Without him, that'd be nothing. Well, yeah, because all they keep doing is throwing them damn jump balls to them. <laughs> If they didn't have him, maybe we would be scoring even twice as many points because he wouldn't just be forcing the ball on these 50-50 jump balls. Was he the guy that got all those jump balls the year they upset Michigan? Or I guess they, they went 11 and whatever, so there wasn't really an upset at the time. But I think they that was I think he did. I could be mistaken. But it was the year that Michigan should have won, and they took Hutchinson's touchdown off the board for no reason. And then the Big Ten was like, oh, yeah, that probably should have been a touchdown. It's like, oh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Awesome. Great, great refing. Great conferencing. Now that the, now that Michigan has the won the last two conferences, there was a there was like a play against Rutgers that I thought, oh man, that 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 should have went Rutgers way. And I'm like, hey, we're finally starting to get the calls by the refs. I know it's only Rutgers. If we're playing Ohio State, we 100 percent wouldn't have got that call. But now it's nice that it's not happened against everybody. If it happens against Michigan State again, then I'll just be scratching my head because I have no idea why. Why are these guys getting helped out? But um, for the ACC right now, them and the Pac-12 have the most undefeated teams left, I think, right? You, you sent me the, the graphic. Um, so the Pac-12 has five. The Big Ten has four. The SEC and the Big 12 only have three. The ACC has six. And remember, the ACC only plays that eight-game schedule. Their conference is big. They're not doing divisions. So some of these teams have pretty weak schedules. I want to sit, point out, now that I'm not done joking about Clemson's hot takes, but I think Louisville's one where, to me... If Louisville doesn't make the ACC championship game this year, I don't know what year is going to be better for them. They only have two ranked ACC schools. They play Duke and Miami. They don't get Clemson. They don't get Florida State. If Duke's for real and Duke only loses one game or something and they they have the tiebreaker over Louisville, um, I would be kind of shocked. But Louisville's heavy favorites in that game. I'm making a prediction right now. That with that easy schedule, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up playing Florida State for the ACC championship. And I don't know anything about Louisville. I don't know if they'd give them trouble. But I think you're going to start to see some newer teams in the ACC with this non-division. Because in the past, Florida State and Louisville would have been in the same division, right? Yeah. So that wouldn't have been an opportunity. We would have been stuck with like Florida State playing North Carolina or something, and they usually choke out. But now the Tar Heels, they're also on here um, as an undefeated team, but they have to play Clemson. And typically, like I said, Clemson didn't look that bad. Uh, I joked about the fumble. They did have the fumble. They held Florida State's rushing, but I honestly think that's Florida State's offensive game plan is for whatever reason. Just throwing the deep ball up. And in overtime, it worked too, right? And I'm like, Clemson, what are you guys doing? You're letting them score so fast? And as soon as they scored that deep touchdown pass, I thought, this game's over. Clemson's not scoring here. Clemson has fallen apart the second half. All they had to do was not fumble the ball. And they probably would have put them away. And the ACC would have kind of been back to, oh, we'll probably get a Florida uh, State-Clemson rematch. But now, I don't know. Actually, we might not have because we don't know how the tiebreakers work. Or at least I don't know in the ACC. Like what would have happened if UNC, Florida State, and Clemson all had one loss? I don't know. Now, well, we, we don't, don't have, have, to, have worry to worry about it. about it. Yeah. Unless now it's going to be UNC, Louisville, and Florida State. And Florida State will get the short end of the stick. And they'll be like, sorry, guys. It just doesn't work out for you. Because if it's something stupid like the Big Ten, it'll be like opponent's record or something. And then who knows how that's going to be out of control, right? Because I could see Florida State, like, I guess there doesn't look too bad. They play Boston College. Boston College could be, like, that would be the one that sinks Florida State. Wouldn't it be funny if Boston College, even though they, they squeaked out that win, if that was a team that kept them out of the ACC championship, how bat mad would you be? Oh, it would be a level 10 Raider. <laughs> I'll buy you a shirt. I guess you can't even get a shirt, right? Would I get a division champ shirt? Or what would it be? 
because uh, Michigan had that. Ohio State tried to make fun of Michigan when Harbaugh won the division, but lost a tiebreaker to Ohio State. And then the, when Michigan won it, Ohio State sold back to back division champ t shirts. Like, what a bunch of assholes. You're doing the same thing you made fun of Michigan for. <laughs> it's like, You're just jealous that they can't. Capitalized on winning back-to-back championships. <laughs> it wasn't. It was division champs. But I can't division get division champs, buddy. They're still champs. That's why I said Michigan had that division tra- champs trophy, and everyone laughed at it. Now they have three division champs and two Big Ten champs since the divisions. Awesome. Keep racking them up. Clemson was already winning Big Ten champs, though. So I don't know why you would celebrate a division champ shirt. That's like even a more just making fun of your own self, right? Now for Florida State. If they lose a tiebreaker, I can't get you a division champ shirt. I'm sorry, dude. I can get you maybe a regular che- season runner-up shirt, champs maybe. I don't know. I don't know how that tiebreaker will work. We'll find out. But you better believe if NC State's in that scenario, we're hanging a banner. Even if we don't get picked. They already have the one loss. doesn't matter. Let's go. Actually, they don't even have it in conference. I was out of conference Notre Dame. I keep getting confused by them. Notre Dame annoys me actually they don't even annoy me it's like i don't want them to win did you see people at game day had signs like we hate michigan more it's like awesome notre dame canceled the series someone was i think it was your boy urban he was making a point that well michigan and notre dame should be playing every year it's like notre dame canceled the series because of their acc partnership michigan didn't back out of the series i was at the game their squirrely little ad ran across the field and handed a note that said that they were done playing. And because they were going to the ACC with their tough ACC crossover schedule, couldn't put Michigan on it because, of course, man, you got to play tough teams. Like, they got to play Wake Forest. They got to play, like, Pitt and maybe Boston listen, College. Rut- listen, Rutgers. And Syracuse. I don't want to hear your crap. Yeah, but they're picking this. Matt, this is their tough independent schedule. They're not playing them all. They're not playing Clemson and Florida State the same year, are they? Not this year. Play maybe Louisville, this though. year. They want to. Oh, maybe they maybe they will in the playoffs. Although they lost that game. And my thing is, Ryan Day, what are you doing? You just beat Notre Dame. That's not even an accomplishment. Everyone beats Notre Dame. Like Notre Dame, w- winning a close game by them should have had you keeping your mouth shut, right? Because there are times where it's like, oh, well, Notre Dame got us. But most of the time, teams are beating Notre Dame in big games. Notre Dame is always known for choking. And they haven't won a BCS game in forever, unless they won one recently, right? I don't think they did. Did they? I know I had the graphic. I'm pretty sure they haven't won a big-time game since the 80s. Maybe 91 um, or somewhere around there. But Ryan Day comes out and he calls out Lou Holtz. And I'm thinking, what the hell is he talking about? I didn't watch the pregame. If Lou Holtz was talking trash on him, that's hilarious. That Ryan Day would be so bothered by it that he came out. But he also kept saying that his team was tough. And they're from Ohio. And I thought, it's like that old Game of Thrones thing where it's like, if you have to tell people you're the king... You're not the king. If you're going on the post-game interview seeing how tough your team is, your team's not tough. Notre Dame only had 10 guys on the field. You barely got in. <laughs> you barely got in. So it wasn't like your line pushed a massive hole and your guy walked in, right? And you, he came out and was like, yeah, we knew we were going to score a touchdown. He came out and was like firing all these like weird references. I thought, this guy's losing it. This guy's having a meltdown, right? Yeah. Teary-eyed Ryan Day. I thought, good grief. This guy, he's going to lose the locker room like that. Talking about guys that are super flexible, Marvin Harrison Jr., man. I I don't know how the guy gets injured every game. Or they inject him with just full of steroids or like take robot body parts on him. And then he's back out. Like I thought he broke his ankle getting rolled up on. Because it looked pretty bad. And next thing I know, he's in like the next play. They just taped his leg up. I'm like, what the heck? This guy's durable. If I'm an NFL guy, I'm watching that guy and I'm thinking, I got to get him on my team. He never gets hurt. I mean, he, he always goes out for a couple of plays, but he always comes back. 
like the bionic man out there. I thought this guy's going to hang it up. What was the receiver that they had that got hurt that hung it up for the year? Or no, wait, that was Bosa, wasn't it? Smart, yeah. smart man. That's what I thought. When I when I saw his leg go out, I thought, he's going to pull Bosa. He's going to not play the rest of the year. Because, like, why would you do that to yourself? But I, I think he's NFL bound this year, right? Maybe he's not. Man, if they have him for one more year, that's very unfair. He should have to transfer to Colorado and play for Dion for a year. <laughs> <laughs> It's only fair, but that was the first time I thought where Ryan Day, everyone's like, oh, so good to see a coach show emotion, right? And I thought, that's not what I want to see from any coach. Like, I was kind of surprised that he went off. The other one was Dan Lanning did like the same thing. And then he was really uncomfortable with, with it afterward, right? Did you see his comments? He said like, yeah. Hey, 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 I'm not going to uh I don't we don't like winning games and like or winning clicks or something. We are here to win games. And then when they called him on it, he's like, Oh yeah, that that wasn't about anybody. Uh he's like backtracking. I thought, what a coward. Like it's obviously what what you're doing. You're doing it in public for a reason. You obviously ran the score up on Colorado for a reason. Right? You're running fake punts from your own side of the field. You're doing it for a reason. And let's just hope, maybe because they're running to the Big Ten, where they're like, yeah, we won't have to play Dion again. Let's put him in his place. Right? I don't know why else you'd want to pour it on. It, it, that, that's like I brought up that 78-point win against Rutgers by Michigan a, a little bit ago. That's exactly why Harbaugh run the score up. Because their coach was saying that Michigan was never taking another recruit from uh, New Jersey. And they brought, I'm not even joking, they had like 100 recruits at the game. And Harbaugh just embarrassed him so bad. And that guy was a former coach of Ohio State. I think it was like Chris Ash, maybe, was the Rutgers coach at the time. He was like talking about how he knows how to beat Michigan. They never lose, they never beat Ohio State. And he was like really talking trash. And Harbaugh just dismantled him. Did he come out crying after saying his team was tough? No, he didn't say anything. But Chris Ash never been heard of from again. Works out perfect. Dan Lanning, I do feel bad for him. Because they're randomly interviewing him about the game. I don't know if you watch a pregame. And his wife is like sick or something. And they kept bringing it up. And I'm like, if my wife's sick, the one thing that I don't want someone bringing up is her sickness during a football interview. Every time. Because they said it was like five years ago. I'm like, ESPN, then why? Why are you talking about it? Let it go. The guy's getting fired up. He's going to take D on down. (laughs) <laughs> like come on get real but those are my big one there was another one who else was going off there were a couple coaches that all had crazy emotional speeches it's like turning it into WWE but these are like grown men like crying um, on TV and I don't know is that getting recruits like is that helping Ryan Day recruit beating Notre Dame it helps the Big Ten it, it hurts the ACC or whatever. Because if Florida State beats a bunch of ACC teams, uh, they're not going to be able to get teams in the playoffs again. They'll just put two Big Ten teams in because Ohio State beat Notre Dame at home, even though they should have lost that game. Let's be honest. Notre Dame just went into prevent D with a team that just throws up jump balls to like stud wide receivers. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't get it. Freeman has to be having nightmares. But um, let's see what else. Yeah, I guess that's all I have kind of written down. Let me go through my notes. Anything you want to talk about for college this week? I mean, I just, I was so, I was impressed with how, how well Oregon played because Oregon is usually they're they're one to lay an egg in a big game and I I thought maybe there is a little bit of smoke to Oregon's Oregon's (laughs) (laughs) maybe there's something to it to come out that that fired up well I did I want to call something out here I know the Big Ten's supposed to not do divisions anymore but they now have a balance where if the Big Ten next year, if things held, 
they would have six teams in the top 10. Three in the East, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State. Three in the West, Washington, Oregon, and USC. Which would make for an ultimately balanced conference. Where, yeah, if you split up the, the, West, the current Big Ten West of teams that are all disappointments like Nebraska, then, oh well. You're bringing in the West teams, and now you can kind of have a balanced nationwide conference that's kind of doing an East first West. But I don't know if that's their plan, to be honest. I don't know if the Big Ten's going to keep expanding or what they're going to do. But I do think it looks good for the future of them. The SEC, on the other hand, is also adding Oklahoma and Texas and adding the other top 25 teams or whatever. Top 10 teams, I think those might be top 10 teams too. I don't know what the SEC would have. They don't have four. They'd have like three top 10 teams. Georgia, Texas, and Oklahoma, unless Oklahoma's not ranked that high. That sounds right. But even then, you have to win in the playoffs because I think the the big thing right now that keeps the SEC up there is like their teams are coming home with the national championship. Clemson won a, won a couple. And the ACC never capitalized. I'm not sure why. But it doesn't matter. Like Once you get to the 12-team playoff, if most of the teams are from like one conference, I guess, actually, they would only have two. It would just be Texas and Georgia. Oklahoma's 14 right now. They are undefeated. Utah's the other one I was missing. Um, and they're going to be in the Big 12. And the way they're playing, they're like a better TCU right now, it seems like. So they could give the Big 12 team some trouble. And their quarterback's not even playing, I don't think. I don't think Cam Rising's back yet. So that might not just be a fluke from what I've seen from them. Um, I also don't like the uh, the Washington State, Oregon State stuff that they've been talking about. Um, I know they've kind of been left behind. But with the 12-team p- playoff... This is the perfect time to prove your brand. They're talking about, how, oh, we should have relegation like like in soccer. No one wants that. No one cares about your school. That's why you guys are in the, in the, pro- like the process right now of being pushed down. Relegation's already happened. No one goes to your games. You guys haven't been good in how long. You guys have, your schools have both basic, basically been jokes. Have you won a Pac-12 championship? I mean, Mike Leach was there, so I, I applaud Washington State for trying to um, go ahead and pay for it. But there's a re- reason that Mike Leach ended up leaving. It was money-wise to go to Mississippi State. It's not like Mississippi State is winning championships, right? But it's hard to do it at Washington State, too. So the fact that they're there and they haven't done anything. The North Division winners were always... Oregon, Stanford, or Washington. And that was for a decade. So now complaining that, oh, wow, we're better than these other Mountain West schools. It's like, really? Then prove it. The only team that should be bitter is Boise State because they never had a fair shake. They never had a fair shake. And I think that if they didn't get it promoted, maybe they would be like Utah, where Utah took the step up. And they were in four Pac-12 championship games. Washington State and Oregon State made zero with Cal. Cal, Oregon State, and Washington State have never appeared in a Pac-12 football championship game. Those three schools were three of the ones that were left behind. It's not a surprise. You want relegation? It just happened to you. No one wants you. You're not good. You're not bringing fans. Like, I'm sorry to say. Why would the Big Ten... Uh, someone from the, that I was talking to was like, oh, we should just bring them into the Big Ten. Why? Why? No one cared about them before. Mike Leach isn't going back to coach Washington State, rest in peace. There's nothing that would make me want to watch Washington State football. Other than if they hired like a big time coach like Dion. And guess what? They could have. They didn't. Dion's been on the market for a few years. 
he could have been hired at any one of these Pac-12 schools, but the Pac-12 school, they made a big stink. They didn't want Oklahoma and Texas back in the 10th, 25th, 10s or whatever the hell it would be called. They, all, they, the presidents did not want them. Well, guess what, presidents? America doesn't want your football school. We don't care about your athletics. So I think what they need to do, I don't care if you're rebuilding the Pac-12, if you're joining the Mountain West, whatever you need to do, go undefeated, win your conference. If you're better than these smaller schools, go undefeated. Make the playoffs, because you'll make it. And then don't get blown out. Because if you, if you join the, the Mountain West and it becomes a new Pac-12, and let's say um, Washington State won against Oregon State, so let's say that they're the premier team. They win, they win it every year. They're like the Gonzaga. You can't come in and lose your first round to Georgia every year. Because why would you be promoted? But some then? people are happy with that. You get, you get the, that little playoff bump. You get a little bit of notoriety. You can say to your alumni, look, we made the playoffs. And that would be perfect. That's what I'm saying. Why do they need to be in the Big Ten to do that? If they're in the Big Ten, they'll never win the championship. Nebraska, have they ever won one? I know they've been there whenever there were the weird divisions in the Rich Rod saga. But have they won one? I don't think so. So you have um, Big Ten teams that have joined. And I, I would say even the SEC teams that have joined, have they ever won a championship? I, I don't think so. I know A&M hasn't, right? I know Missouri made it a couple times. Who else joined that conference? South Carolina hasn't won it. <laughs> like, I don't know, going all the way back, has Arkansas won one? I don't think so. Oh, I guess Penn State, they, they're the original. They did win four titles. Only two of them were outright, though. So put an asterisk beside that number, Matt. Um, I will <laughs> I will say Nebraska, Maryland, and Rutgers have never won one in the Big Ten. And honestly, if you're a betting man, do you think they will win one? No. Probably not. Rutgers honestly has the best chance, I think. I know you're making fun of them. Shano, he's obviously a good coach, right? And their recruiting area is actually pretty rich in talent. Your boy Jabril Peppers went was from there. Rashawn Gary, he had I think three sacks against the Saints. Your boy Jameis last week. I think he might have even been the one that hurt Derek Carr from that area. So you can get top NFL top type talent from New Jersey. I mean, heck, even Georgia was getting guys from like the Philly, New Jersey area recently. It seems like it's usually Michigan and Georgia fighting over them for whatever reason, and it drives me nuts because I'm thinking it used to be Michigan fighting Penn State. Why is Georgia up here? They don't need to be up here. <laughs> Go back to your satellite camps in the in the in the south, man. Like get away from here. Uh, but Rutgers, if they would ever put it together, they could have just based on their location. You could say Maryland to a lesser extent, but I think Rutgers is closer to like New York and the New Jersey area that I think it's easier to recruit in your state. If you're going to leave New Jersey, I don't I don't think you're going to go to Maryland. But Maybe I'm wrong. Nebraska, I think, is... What, what program did you bring up? I think I was going to mention him earlier. Uh, someone from the NFL, I think, you talked about how they can't put it together. And it reminded me of Nebraska. Maybe it's just a culture thing. I, I think it's the Cowboys, maybe. Where it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how talented you are. For whatever reason at Nebraska lately, since they've joined the Big Ten, their culture is lost. It makes me think that it's some some people around the program. Maybe it's boosters. Maybe it's something else. I mean, we've seen it with A&M too, where you have all the talent. You have a championship coach. Why can't you at least like make the championship game? Like, why can't you do anything? Like Nebraska, man, they were in the West. You, you shouldn't be letting Northwestern make the championship game more than you. Like, I'm more familiar with the East-West split um, between the teams. But, like, Nebraska had made it whenever it wasn't a split. But what are you doing? The other ones, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Wisconsin's able to win it. They Wisconsin had won three Big Ten titles back whenever that weird split was happening because Ohio State wasn't eligible. 
and there were some other things coming on. And then they had shared one right before with Michigan State. It's like, now that we have one true champion, you've seen Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State, and then Michigan State has won like one or two. I can't remember when the actual, when they went back to East West. But it's going to be very hard once you add in the Pac-12 schools for any of the traditional Big Ten schools like Illinois to ever win again. Like, I'd be honestly shocked if some of the Big Ten powers from back in the day ever win a championship again now that the Pac-12 is coming in. Because the Big Ten just took the best teams from the Pac-12 and are going to merge in. Like, obviously, it's going to be harder for Michigan to win a championship now. It's going to be harder for Ohio State, too. Because not only do you, does Michigan now have to beat Ohio State, now we're probably going to have to beat like USC or Oregon or someone in back-to-back weeks. Because that game's at the end of the year. And unless they do some type of split championship playoff roundup thing, which I'd be for, but I, I, don't, like, I don't understand why Oregon State and Washington State want to go into a gauntlet like that. Prove your top dog. Because if you if you have the, the support to be in the Big Ten, then you can obviously fundraise whenever you're in the Mountain West. Fundraise in the Mountain West, get teams to, to or get fans to show up. If you're winning conference titles all the time, awesome. It's not like the Mountain West is that bad anyway. Um, they're probably one of the better conferences in college football, I would think. And so maybe, maybe, yeah, we're not having Oregon come in, so we're not going to sell as many tickets. But, I don't know. You have Air Force, Boise State, Fresno State, UNLV, San Diego State, Nevada. There are some programs with support. Some of them aren't as bad. I mean, even Wyoming was just tied with Texas a week or two ago. But that's my rant on it. I know you're cutting in and out, Matt. You have anything you want to add? No, I don't have much else tonight. I think that's all I have, too. Oh, I'll end with one thing. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, your boy, since I mentioned A&M, how the heck is he able to run out on the field while a guy's returning? I think it was like an interception or a fumble or something. How's he in the middle of the field while the guys are running back down the field for a touchdown? Well, it's easy. It's easy on the field. He didn't know. He was thinking about his next offensive play. <laughs> He's just out there. Sometimes you just get lost in space. It could have been a perfect moment for TCU, or not TCU, T- A&M boosters if he would have Woody Hayes the guy and just punched him as he's running by. Like, that's a perfect position because he, <laughs> he had to think like, oh crap, they're returning this ball right by me. Like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Um, I should tackle him, right? Run off the sideline, tackle him, um, and then just don't let him score. Then he gets fired, and then it's over. He can go coach West Virginia next year. It seems like what he wants to do, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I would love to see a redemption story for him, though, where he goes to West Virginia and wins a bunch of playoff games. Because like I said, the playoff, the expanded playoff is going to be more like get to the Final Four. And I think West Virginia is a team that could do that if they ever, you know, start to support the program again and hire good coaches. They they need an innovative coach. <laughs> they don't have that. Same with Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is so dead as a program. It did not bring in like an innovative coach. Like we talked about like Bryles and the scandals that he's had. His son wasn't really involved in that. Try to get someone like that in that has an offensive mind or like what was the offensive coordinator from TCU that Clemson hired hire a young guy like that and have him be like the CEO. It's working for the dolphins, right? They have the young guy. He's out there cracking jokes. Did you see him run off the field? The the dolphins halftime speech. He gave the speech. Remind me of Jim Harbaugh. He just took off and sprinted into the locker room. That's like, why? You that pumped your guys are killing the, the Broncos right now? He's like, got to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> got to go see my boys. But it was like a dead sprint. It was like John Rocker was coming out. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Uh, but 
that's all I have. Uh, that was my final bell. Jimbo Fisher being on the field. Um, actually, no, I did have one other random baseball thing since I talked about John Rocker. Uh, they're talking about, Joe, was it Joe Block? Some guy on Twitter, man. He was putting out that the Pirates right now, if you only look at the last 80 games, Matt, they have a winning record. They'd be in the playoffs. I was like, are you kidding me? This is the oh, kind of crap that you're, that you're spewing. I told him that he should make sure Nutting sees that so he can sell more season tickets. It's like, how, how can you spin your crappy year where you're already eliminated from the playoffs? The only team that they're better than in their division is uh, the Cardinals, which is surprising to me. But I haven't followed the Cardinals that much. Uh, that it's just like, how can you spin it? How can you spin it so that fans keep paying tickets? And that's the theme. I haven't had an update on my con- concert either. Um, refund stuff. Of course, I'm trying to f- get more information, waiting in the queue. Uh, just do right, man. Do right by the fans. Try to put a, a product out there that makes sense. And maybe you'll be more successful. But um, thanks for listening. If there's anything you want to talk about, I do know that there's been some weird download issues with Google Podcasts. Apparently, Google Podcasts is being discontinued. So I know we've seen like a like a big drop off from people that were using that. So if if you have that, I guess they want you to use YouTube Podcasts now or YouTube Music. I don't get it. Um, but hopefully things get get righted back out here in the next couple of weeks. I don't know when they're officially canceling, but I have been digging into it, and that's supposedly the issue. So if you're listening, you might need to find a different app. Um, but I, sh- I forgot to bring it up at the beginning of the show. But thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. <laughs>